Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're looking at converting these rotary switches into six position. Now the one we'll, we will be working on is the one that we can get from eBay which is this one but the same principle applies to any of this type just the one on the left the blue one that has actually come out of a radio requires two wipers removing from the central wafer switch but the one we're going to be working on today is the one on the right hand side which is available from eBay so this is a two pole five position switch now we're going to convert it into a two pole six position switch so let's get started so here is the switch as you can hear there's five positions now the clever thing with this switch is that the contacts are actually there for the six position as you can count up there's seven contacts either side so one common and six poles so let's measure them so you see this one it's got no connection and then this is the first connection move down to the second one and so on So what we need to do is recover this, this pole. So we'll switch over to the other side of the switch. And you can see just exactly the same. We have a spare contact that seems to be doing nothing. So let's get to the modifying. So I'm just using a small desktop vise and we're filing these lugs down. Now I've not cut anything out of this video. probably done it slower than I normally would but the whole process of converting took about 15 minutes so once we've filed some of these lugs down we can try and prise up this metal back plate so I'm just using a thin screwdriver just to get in between the plastic and the metal Now you have to be very careful with this plastic work, it's very brittle, so always be gentle. But you can see there, the metal back plate come off. Now we need to file these lugs down a little bit further, but we need to file the sides down this time, so the actual wafer switch itself will come off. So once we've given them a file down, we can try and prise the wafer switch up. I just can't get my screwdriver in yet. So what we're doing is just using some side cutters and just removing some more of the actual lug. And you can see some more metal work comes away. So we'll try again. So this time I'm going to use a knife just to try and get underneath it. And 
So just using my knife, just getting in between the plastic and the metal work, just to try and see if we can make it lift. Once we've got a small gap, we can try again with the very thin screwdriver. And you can see it move there. So now we've got a gap, we can now go around. So I'm not forcing it up from one side, I'm just working both sides. So working from the gap and just bringing it up gently. You can see with just a little bit of force, it goes over the metal lug. Like I say, being very careful with this plastic wafer, it is quite brittle. And one handy hint when you're soldering, do not leave the soldering iron on these pins for too long because it will melt and it will deform the switch and render it useless. So working from either side, we finally managed to prise off the actual wafer switch itself. So this requires no further modification as it's already got the six contacts. We've got a lug to mark which way it goes around. Now we left the switch in the position of the um, position we needed to reclaim. Now if you look at that actual wafer there on the left hand side, that is actually the three position one. But on the right hand side, it's the five position. So if you convert in a three position to a six position, you need to change this disc around and put it on the five position side. But for us now, we need to remove this area of metal. So we need to remove this wafer, or should we say uh, metal work from the actual switch itself. Now this is just held in by a couple of metal burrs that have been bent over. Unfortunately, we're going to break them, but we're going to glue, the, glue it back on later. So gently just prising it up. Now there are two ball bearings and springs underneath this. So you need to be very careful, very gentle. So just prising it up gently. We can get this out of the switch. Now at this point the shaft is loose, it will come out through the bottom. So we'll take this away carefully. Just pop this to one side. Now there's our ball bearings and underneath our springs. So we must be careful not to lose those. So using the vise, we start to file away. So we've put it in the vise, but we don't want to be gripping it too hard as we don't want to squash those actual um, places where the ball bearing sits. Now this is the whole process, but I've sped it up. The whole process of filing took about three minutes. Just filing both sides, or should we say the top and the bottom of it. Working it round and then checking. Now 
Да. So that's how much we need to take off. We've just left a little bit there. So that should have recovered our sixth position. So now we need to reassemble it. As you can see, the shaft is loose. So now we need to hold it. Placing this back over the um, shaft. Just drop it into position. So whilst holding the shaft, give it a good push down. That gets it roughly onto it. And then with these long nose pliers, we can push down even further. Now we can actually test this now, but we need to hold it in position because if this flies off, we're going to lose our ball bearings and the springs so we're just checking for a click on each position and there's our six positions so back on the vice again give it a final push down Now I can just use a little dot of super glue, just the tiniest amount, just on the burrs that were removed and just on the sides. Just the tiniest bit of glue, doesn't have to be a lot. It will hold it in position. And then to speed this up, just use a little bit of super glue activator. Now obviously if we pull the shaft really, really, really hard, there's a chance it may come out, but in normal operation, this should be fine. So we'll just give it one final test. As you can see, it's not pulling out anymore. So now we can put our switch wafer back on. So we'll just make sure that it's aligned and then we push it down onto those lugs. And then finally, the metal cap. Just need to straighten this out because we're bent it a little bit on removing it. This just lives on the top like that. And then we can just put a little drop of super glue. Doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to hold it in position. And again, a little bit of activator just to speed up the process. And there's our switch modified. So remember from the start of the video where the second contact wasn't working, now it's working. So that's position two, position three, position four, position five, and position six. Go on to the other common. That's position one, and two, and so on. And 
there's our six position switch converted from the five position. That's your selector shafts quite sturdy. Everything's back together as it should be. Simple as that. So the whole process took 15 to 20 minutes to do. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in another video.